You hear the crowd down there getting behind the Spartans early. Great to have you with us. Hope you enjoy our broadcast tonight here on Case.edu. And we are underway. This will be Dorsett from the 10-yard line. Breaks up the middle of the field. Goes outside the hash and gets tripped up at about the 26-yard line. And that's where the Bearcats will come out first and 10. Five seconds into the first quarter. And Dave, seven and one, the Spartans record coming off of a bye. They're gonna wanna jump on this team early and especially on defense. They're gonna wanna play aggressive. They're gonna wanna get their offense onto the field early. They're looking for a three and out on the first possession. That's an excellent stat, Eddie. It shows that Greg Debelak and his staff, they know what to do with that week off to get uh, their teams ready to go when the schedule fires back up again, which it's firing up right now. Shaminsky will keep it after the fake. They'll throw it to the outside. Pass is caught. So the first completion of the night for St. Vincent. And it's caught out there by big number 85. And that is Damon Black. So Black makes his ninth reception of the year. He is just a sophomore. Shaminsky. Second down and five after a pickup of five on the short pass. They'll keep it on the ground. First running play of the night for St. Vincent. Their featured tailback is Shavante Kraft. He is averaging 44 yards a game. Kraft, a junior, just 5'6", 180 pounds, and they are running the no huddle here. Shaminsky's going to take off. Far left side, gets outside the numbers and cannot turn the corner. He has wrestled to the ground by the Spartans and a nice job, Eddie, sealing that edge. Yeah, Shaminsky, I think, tried to do a little bit too much with his legs on that last play. Whenever you're going south, you're going in the opposite direction, needless to say. So uh, the Spartans' defense going with gap-to-gap -gap speed right there, sticking with uh, Shaminsky. Great defensive start for Case as they're going to get the ball here. Aaron Weisberg again on the defensive coverage, and so that'll bring up fourth down. And seven yards to go after a loss of two on the run by Shaminsky. Here is the punt by David Butler. Gets off a high spiraling punt. It's caught at the 35-yard line by the Spartans. That was hauled in by Justin Fan, the 5'8 freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. A four-yard return up to the 40-yard line. And now the Spartans will come out first and 10 in a scoreless game. And, Eddie, you nailed it. The Spartans' defense holding on a three and out, and a good start defensively. And, and Rob Kuda is going to be licking his chops right here. You're giving a young quarterback with a lot of talent a great starting field position. Let's see what he does with it here. Kuda, 6'1", 195, out of Barrett, uh, Bartlett, Illinois, South Elgin High School product. He wears number four. Empty backfield behind Kuda. Five receivers in on first down. First and 10. Spartans operating in their own territory on the 40. They go to Herb on the far left side outside the numbers. He has wrestled to the ground after a pickup of about eight. You know, Dave, Rob Kuda did an excellent job of reading the defense here because St. Vincent only puts three guys down on the defensive line. You have to identify the blitz as he did, got rid of the ball quickly, and made a nice completion. Defensive coverage, Joey Milholm. Russell's Herb to the ground, and that is a handful of receiver to get down. Herb 6'2", 205 out of Charlotte. Hockman, the fullback in the game. They fake to him. Kuda over the middle. Pass is knocked down incomplete, intended for Brendan Lynch. And there to knock the pass away for the Bearcats was senior defensive back Devin Anderson. The other great thing about Kuda, he has such a quick release. That ball comes out of his hands lightning early, so these receivers, they have to be ready for it. Third down and one. Football on the 49-yard line. Case still in their own territory. No score first quarter. 12.43 to go. Kuda with a full house backfield now. They'll hand it up the middle trying to get the first down. Carrying the football was Jeffrey Brown, Jr., the sophomore tailback, and it looks like he was stuffed. Eddie, I'm not sure he got it. I'm not sure he got it either, Dave. And 16 third down attempts for the Spartan last week against Chicago, only uh, five conversions there. I think they want to do a little bit better on third down, especially third down and short to keep your offense off the field, but doesn't work this time. Fourth down and one, 12-10 to go. 
Both teams using that hurry up style offense. Back to kick it is Benny Beyer, and he will get the kick away and angles it to the sideline. Beautiful kick, and that one is going to bounce into the end zone. 51 yard punt by Benny Beyer. The St. Vincent Bearcats will come back out. Eddie, while we have a chance, let's take a look at the starting lineup first for St. Vincent as they come back out offensively. One of the better offenses in their league, Dave, is starting at left tackle, Danny Simcoe, a freshman uh, out of Benedictine, a local product starting at left tackle for St. Vincent. Thomas uh, Padaka at left guard. He is in his fourth year out of Glendale, Arizona. The center at six foot, 220 pounds, Reed Brinkoff, number 55, right tackle Colton Hearn. And that will round up your starting lineup. Shaminsky in the shotgun, about six yards behind the line of scrimmage. He'll fire it out to the far sideline. Outside the numbers was looking again for Damon Black, but it's incomplete. Second and 10 coming up. And of course, you got Shaminsky as your quarterback. You've got Shavante Kraft, the tailback back there. We're going to see a lot of those two guys as well as the feature players in the St. Vincent offense. Kraft lines up to the right of Sheminsky. Second down and 10. Operating from the 20 yard line. They'll give it to Kraft. He's caught from behind by Scott Surin, who came in on a blitz and grabbed Shavante Kraft around the waist and wrestled him to the ground. That's a loss of two. Well, I think if there's one thing that the Spartans defense has proved thus far, you're not going to throw them off. I mean, St. Vincent has thrown them a couple curveballs early, but the Spartans have been prepared. Third down and 12. Sir in the free safety out of Brunswick, Ohio. 11.20 to go. No score. First quarter. Shotgun snap to Shaminsky. Passing down. Fires it. Caught. First down yardage on the outside. Dalton Dietrich makes the catch. The sophomore out of Finleyville, PA. And Shaminsky needed 12. He got 13. And it's first and 10 for the Bearcats. And an excellent spot. That's a long throw to make in front of your sideline right there. Pinpoint accuracy for Shaminsky. First and 10, football marked at the 32-yard line. Bearcats with their second offensive possession. Kraft hits the pile, spins to the left, and gets knocked down. And again, Surin getting into the backfield, unblocked. It's a pickup of two for Shavante Kraft. He is a slippery 5'6 junior out of Jeanette High School in Jeanette, PA. Kraft again will break to the outside. Got a nice seal block. Cuts it upfield. Outside the numbers. Gets across the 40. Down close to the 43-yard line. Jordan Esteban wrestles him down. Kraft with another first down for the Bearcats. Well, most of Shavante Kraft's runs have been in between the tackles. This time he gets in space. And you see what he can do when he gets the ball in space. A solid run, picking up a first down. No huddle offense for the Bearcats. Play action, they'll hand it to their backup, Jannard Dorsett, ball on the ground, it's loose, and they fight for it. They'll have to untangle the pile. Spartans feel they have it on the fumble. Jannard Dorsett on his first carry lost the football. Did not see who got the first hit, but the Spartans have it. Coming up with the football was Nick Kwan. And they forced the turnover. Well, with the rain earlier today and the somewhat uh, wet conditions on the field, ball security is going to be a big point of emphasis today. And it comes out of the hand of the steady tailback, Javante Kraft, and the Spartans looking to take advantage starting in St. Vincent territory. First and 10, football at the 41-yard line, no score. Ten minutes to go here in the first quarter. Home opener for the Case Western Reserve Spartans. Rob Kuda. He completed 21 of 35 passes two weeks ago against Chicago in week one. He'll drop back to throw it. Guns it right side, right on the numbers. Pass is caught out there. Defensive coverage for St. Vincent from Daryl Burrell. And I believe the pass was caught by Luke DeFrancesco, the sophomore. His first catch. And it goes for six yards, second down and four. No huddle for Case. They'll hand it up the middle again. That's Jeffrey Brown, Jr. Dives across the 30, down to the 29. It's a first down for the Spartans. Spartans going to keep the pressure on St. Vincent's defense, forcing their coordinators to make early play calls. And I don't think that they got the 
right play call off that they wanted to to react to Case's offense. Great job being heads up by the Spartans offensively. Nine and a half minutes to go. First half, first uh, quarter, no score. Cuda with Kanganelli in the backfield right now. Anthony Kanganelli checking in for the first time this season. He missed the Chicago game with a hamstring. Cuda in trouble as they come on a blitz. Now he runs for it, gets back to the 30, gets through a tackler and down past the 25-yard line. Before he pays the price, he gets hit and knocked down. First contact by Matt McCarthy, the junior linebacker. Boy, and Rob Cuda showing himself how slippery he can be out there in the open field. I mean, that was... That had trouble written all over it, Dave. Three guys getting into the backfield for St. Vincent with the blitz, but he made do with what he had. And we talked about it earlier, being able to improvise and make plays with his legs. Second down and nine. Now they'll hand the ball to Kanganelli. He's wrapped up immediately as he hits the 25-yard line. So that's going to bring up third down for Case. First one there defensively was big number 99, Dwayne Hewitt, the senior defensive lineman. And that is a big boy right there. He's only six foot, so he can get underneath the padding, 275 pounds, and a very experienced defensive tackle for St. Vincent. 275 pounds. He's got the whole package there, commanding a couple bodies in the interior of the offensive line. That is a big lineman at the Division Three level. Third down and six for the Spartans. Their second chance on third down. Kuda takes the snap, empty backfield. Holds his position, goes to Lynch, sweeping to the outside. He has the first down and more. He's run out of bounds close to the 16-yard line. Spartans convert on third down. They're in the red zone now with a new set of downs. Eight minutes to go here in the first quarter with the clock moving. And I love the fact that he used one of his receivers as a blocker. We talk about vision, finding the open holes. Well, how about you find a blocker for yourself, too, and get some extra yards? Lynch uh, catching that ball. On the run, he had four catches against Chicago. He can be a game changer coming off a knee injury last year. First and 10 from the 17-yard line, middle of the field. Albers has it to the five and into the end zone. It's a touchdown, Spartans. And they jump on top here in the first quarter, 6-0. 17-yard strike from Kuda to Ethan Albers. And the Spartans... Take advantage of the fumble, and they march down and punch it in. Albers, his second touchdown reception of the season. Ben Carniol will come out, try the extra point. Tap Tasker is the holder, and uh, Whistle stops the extra point attempt. Might have been some movement or a delay, not sure. False start is going to be called against the Spartans, so they'll back it up five yards. Well, Dave, going back to the touchdown play, way, way to go. The Spartans take advantage of the zone defense from St. Vincent, and they left big Ethan Albers unaccounted for in the open field. Yeah, he had a fairly wide open path to the end zone. Carney already, he'll boot it up, and it is good. Spartans. Take a 7 to nothing lead, 7.33 to go here in the opening quarter. Back with more of Case's home opener against St. Vincent. First this time out on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our special spectacular accommodations. Well, there you see some of the fans looking on. This home opener getting started off on a very positive note. A lot of folks watching from the Wyatt Athletic and Wellness Center. Great view of DeSanto Field. 7.33 to go, 7 to nothing. Case Western Reserve in front after the Ethan Albers touchdown reception. Kickoff is going to bounce to an up back taken up there by Jack Palumbo, the freshman running back, and 
He rumbles over toward the sideline, gets knocked down, and Russell to the ground with the help of Cody Calhoun. And the Bearcats will come back out with their offensive unit, 7.28 to go. We have not had a chance yet, Eddie, to talk about the Spartans' defense. We'll run those guys down as we get uh, started here on this offensive possession. But, boy, you nailed it. The zone coverage, and Ethan Albers had wide open spaces. Yeah, they forgot about him, and that's a really dangerous guy to leave open in the open field at tight end. Shaminsky calls for the snap of the shotgun. Kraft breaking to the outside. Gets outside the numbers near the sideline and is hit and driven out of bounds. And again, Cody Calhoun, the sophomore, jumps in there and runs Shavante Kraft out of bounds into the St. Vincent bench. No gain on the play. Second down and 10 now with 7.13 to go here in the opening quarter. Evan Shaminsky. The first two games, 399 yards. He has not yet thrown an interception. Four touchdown passes. He'll drop back, fires it over the middle. It's caught again by Black, and he gets across the 40, but he is stopped before he can run for any significant extra yardage. Aaron Weisberg on the tackle. Now Damon Black catching that ball on the run, but was neutralized before he could get farther downfield. Leaves it now as a third and five. The football is resting at the St. Vincent 42-yard line. Shaminsky back to throw on third and five. Rushed out of the pocket near the sideline. Fires it, and it's picked off. A diving interception, but I'm not sure if it's going to be inbounds. It's going to go down as an incompleted pass. Jason Lockamy, the sophomore defensive end, jumps in there to grab the football, but he was out of bounds. It's going to bring about fourth and five. Well, this was an awfully close play to an interception right here, Dave. A really athletic play, tiptoeing across the near sideline right in front of his own bench. Unfortunately, he's not able to come up with the pick, but it's fourth down anyway, so the Spartans did their job defensively. See who drops back deep. I believe that's Justin Fan. Here comes the punt. <laughs> Fan will let it bounce. No return coming up on this punt. It uh, doesn't really take much of a St. Vincent bounce. bounce. It's uh, down at the 25-yard line, so the Spartans will start deep in their own territory. Nice kick for St. Vincent by punter David Butler, the senior out of York, PA. First and 10 Spartans, they lead it by a score of seven to nothing. Great start for the Spartans. And defensively, they have held three straight times now against the Bearcats. We have played Roughly nine minutes in this football game. It's the home opener between Case, Western Reserve, and St. Vincent. Spartans in their home grays with the blue helmets, blue trim. St. Vincent in their white jerseys, the green pants, and the white helmets. Now a delay of game. Spartans did not get the playoff. Well, that was one of the things, Dave, that kind of hurt the Spartans in week one against Chicago. Seven penalties costing them 70 yards. And, you know, luckily they were able to have two weeks to kind of work out the kinks and, and try to eliminate some of those flags. But a couple early ones here for the Spartans, but it's nothing to panic over. First down and 15 from the 20-yard line now. And Kuda takes off, 30, 35, out to the 40. Gets a block from Herb across midfield, 40. Down to the 30 and knocked down near the 26-yard line. Rob Kuda. And you could just see the Spartans coming in waves, Eddie, blocking for the quarterback. Boy, Kuda just insatiable on this play. I mean, he picks up 30 yards, already a career-long run, and then he cuts it back to the inside and picks up about five more yards. Excellent run there by Kuda. Close to 52 yards on the scamper by Kuda. Biggest play of this game so far. They'll swing it out. Pass is caught by Lynch just above the turf. Franco Harris style. And he dives down close to the 21-yard line. It's a pickup of seven. Lynch able to get his hands under that one before it hit the turf. 
No huddle. They'll go to Lynch again on the outside. Defender fell down 20, 15 to the 10, and upended St. Vincent's Joey Hoffner knocking him down with the ankle tackle before he could go right down the sideline into the end zone. The Spartans have it first and goal from the 10 yard line. And Brian Erb, wide receiver for Spartans with a big block there too. Yeah, Erb had a big block on the Cuda run as well. So he is certainly doing his job in that department. First and goal from the 10. Cuda is going to take his time here. Plenty of time left on the play clock. It's down to nine. Under five to go, seven nothing. Case first quarter, pass to the sideline near the pylon. It is caught, but it's inside the one. Ethan Albers makes the catch, going to the corner and fell down just outside the pylon on the left sideline. Ethan Al up of nine. Ethan Albers thought he had his second touchdown of the first quarter right there, but still a great opportunity for the Spartans to go up by two scores here. They got one of the more proficient offenses in the red zone that we've seen in their conference. They've got two fullbacks in there with Kanganelli. Kuda will go to Kanganelli, puts his head down, fires his body forward, and it's a touchdown Spartans. Anthony Kanganelli, the sophomore out of Mayfield High School, Scores his first touchdown of the season, and the Spartans lead it by a score of 13 to nothing here in the first quarter. How about the offensive proficiency by the Spartans? Rob Kuda doing a little bit of everything at the quarterback position, but other players stepping up and making his job a little bit easier on the sophomore quarterback. They'll line up for the PAT, Ben Carniol. Kicks it up, and it is good. Carniol two for two in extra point tries. The Spartans extend the lead now to 14 to nothing. 4.23 to go here in the opening quarter. Back to DeSanto Field with more Spartans football after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our special spectacular accommodations. 14 to nothing, the Spartans with the early lead on St. Vincent. Eddie Jansen, I don't know that uh, Greg Debelak and company could have drawn it up any better than what it's gone so far. You know, they didn't get the result that they wanted in week one in Chicago, Dave, but really the Spartans offense has picked up right where they left off. I mean, Rob Kuda working hard down there leading this offense in a very quick style. It's worked out well for the Spartans. Spartans are going to try a short kick. They might recover this one. It's loose, and the Spartans have it. I believe Scott Surin fell on the football. Cody Calhoun was there, and Surin scooped it up. Spartans with the pooch kick. They recover it inside the 40-yard line. They will take over. First and 10, the football will rest on the 37-yard line. Boy, how do you like that? I mean, the Spartans have their foot on the throats of the St. Vincent Bearcats right now. I mean, you, you step it up another notch, putting two scores on the board, and now you're even more aggressive recovering that kick and get, giving yourself another opportunity for more offense. Weston Salerno could not have placed it any better in that open spot. Spartans back on the field offensively. First and 10 from the 37-yard line of the Bearcats. It's 14 to nothing, Case Western Reserve. They'll swing it over the middle. It's caught near the 30-yard line. Hauled in by Zach Medved, the tight end. Medved, 6'1", 210, a junior out of Imperial, Pennsylvania. His first catch of the night. They went to him a lot last year. Kuda, now busted play, and he's in trouble. He'll be sacked. Now flags come out at the end of that play. St. Vincent broke through and had pressure on Kuda immediately. Andrew Geisler, the senior, had him by the ankles and then got plenty of help. Well, to me, Dave, it looked like a design run from the start, and I think that St. Vincent knew right away. A pace mask coming up here, Eddie, against the Bearcats. So they grabbed... 
Okuda. A lot of hands in there, and one of them went to the face mask. And this one's going to be walked off all the way to the 18-yard line. So that is a big, big penalty. Well, you on the St. Vincent sideline, you feel like you got a big play there. The sack might help to squash the momentum, but then the face mask moves it ahead. In the red zone again for the Spartans, Kuda to throw. Holding his place in the pocket. Fires to the end zone. Diving catch by DeFrancesco. Touchdown, Spartans. Kuda fires a rocket to the end zone. DeFrancesco hauls that one in. Diving near the back of the end zone. What a catch by the sophomore. And initially it was a little tough to tell if he reeled it in in the middle of the field, but how about the protection for Kuda that time? He had all day to throw. You give a quarterback that kind of time, he's going to find a target nine times out of ten. And he held his position back there very well and waited on DeFrancesco to get open. There's the kick by Carniol. It is up and it is good, and the Spartans have... Scored three touchdowns early, 3.36 to go here in the first quarter. Spartans 21 and the Bearcats nothing. More to come from DeSanto Field after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Case Western Reserve leading it by a score of 21 to nothing. Juan Kuhn Park with the kickoff. It'll be taken back behind the 10-yard line and brought out on the St. Vincent return across the 30 outside the numbers near the sideline. And finally wrestled out of bounds. D.J. Oshant Kelly, the junior wide receiver, working on special teams with a very nice return. He gets the football all the way out to the well, let's see where they're going to mark it. Looks like the 35-yard line. Make it the 36. So close to a 26-yard return. And Dave, we know that head coach Greg Debelak and the Spartans talked about St. Vincent and them not really being a good first quarter team last year, being outscored 89 to 41 in the opening quarter in games. Well, down 21 to nothing. Shavante Kraft spins off the first wave of tacklers and then gets pushed out of bounds. Nicely done by Nick Kwan to finally wrestle him out of bounds. A short pickup on first down. And, well, you could be the best team in the country in the second, third, and fourth quarter if you dig yourself too much of a hole here. Very difficult to come back. 21 to nothing. Spartans getting good. Big touchdown passes from Kuda, as well as a huge run from the sophomore quarterback. Bad snap, gets through Sheminsky, flag down on the play. Ball is loose. Spartans appear to have the football on the fumble, but there is a flag on the near side, and we'll see what that's all about to see if this takeaway is going to stand for the Spartans. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was just a bad snap by the center brink off, or he just couldn't. Get a firm hand on it, but that ball never touched air. I mean, it basically hugged the ground all the way to the quarterback, so clearly some kind of uh, miscommunication in the offensive line for the Bearcats. Bearcats heading over to the sideline. Looks like there's a timeout. Let's see if we can pick up the call here. So the Spartans were offside on the play. And so that uh, fumble and subsequent recovery will be wiped out on the penalty. 2.56 to go here in the first quarter. You know, Dave, I bet that was why that, that snap was so off. I think the center almost pretty much saw a ghost that time. And usually when you jump off sides, that can rattle the center a little bit. That's probably why that snap was so low as it was hugging the ground there. Reed Brinkoff, the sophomore, just fired it back there on that first movement. So the Bearcats will keep the football, 2.56 to go. Beautiful sunset here 
at University Circle. Beautiful red hue on the cloud cover as the sun sets. Hey, I'm a big fan of sunshine, but I'm glad it's setting now as we were looking right into the sun at the start of the football game. Under the lights here at DeSanto Field in the home opener. 21 to nothing, Spartans. They'll snap it back to Sheminsky, a dangerous, elusive quarterback. He runs to the outside, fires, and it's caught by Damon Black as he goes out of bounds into the case bench just short of midfield. That's an eight-yard pickup, and it's good for a first down. Well, Damon Black is going to be the go-to guy at six foot three in those long arms. He's going to be able to extend his range to catch a lot of passes and make life a little bit easier for Sheminsky back there. He had eight receptions in their first two games. He has hold in three tonight. He's out of Lakeland, Florida. In motion, Dalton Dietrich. They'll keep it in the hands of Sheminsky. Tried to run for it. And Cody Calhoun got back in there and hit him. And also had some help up front from Andrew Benathy. And it is a loss of about one. 157 to go, first quarter. Great to have you with us for Spartans football. It is a breezy night. Right now, the Bearcats moving left to right, and they're moving into the wind. Four receivers set for Sheminsky, second and 11. Football at the 48 yard line of the Bearcats. Pressure coming. Esteban chasing him. Sheminsky on the run near the sideline. He's in big trouble now. Tries to get rid of it as Scott Surin got there defensively. Flags came out. Spartans had a lot of guys right in the face. Tyler Doty was there as well. There's a flag in the middle of the field. I don't think that would be a grounding call Eddie, he was well out of the pocket and under duress. Well, and the first initial flag came out before the throw. It's an illegal block against St. Vincent. Just too much pressure from the Spartans. And then, uh, you know, the bad throw, not, not going to be grounding. As you mentioned, he was well outside of the, the hashtags there. But either way, it's going to go against the Bearcats. And they're just digging themselves a bigger hole now. Third down and 26. And the football will be marked back to the Bearcats 33-yard line. 1.33 to go, first quarter. Boy, it's great to have football back here at DeSanto Field. Spartans 0-1, St. Vincent 1-1. Spartans had the bye last week. Sheminsky on a long third down. He's got some space in front of him, but he's in trouble to the 35 out near the sideline, and he's run out of bounds near the 39-yard line. It's a pickup of six. Cheminsky had some open space for a moment, Eddie, but the Spartans closed that up very quickly. You know, Dave, I don't think we've given enough credit to the Spartans' secondary defensively. I mean, they have made a lot of those receivers unavailable in the passing lanes. That really forced Cheminsky to take off and run the football. Calhoun, Surin, Esteban, all back there in the defensive backfield. Sheminsky will get rid of it up top, near sideline. Pass was almost picked off by Nick Kwan. He was step for step with Dustin Lohman, the senior wide receiver. Pass incomplete. That brings about fourth down and 21. How about the positioning of Nick Kwan right there? He's in perfect position to, at the very least, swat this football away, maybe even come up with an interception. But really, he put himself in an excellent spot to deny that long pass for St. Vincent right there. Kwan out of Hawaii makes the nice defensive play. Here's the punt by Butler, fan at the 16-yard line. Makes to the outside, right along the hash mark, and he is wiped out. Great special teams tackle on the run by Brett Copabianco, the freshman linebacker. 43 seconds left, and the Spartans will come back out here in the first quarter, leading it by a score of 21 to nothing. They have a charitable 21 to three on the scoreboard, but I don't believe uh, St. Vincent has kicked a field goal yet. I know the sun was bright, but I don't think yeah. it was that bright. <laughs> we welcome all of the St. Vincent fans watching in on our broadcast here on case.edu. Pack matchup, Cuda to throw it. 
Up top, wide open. That's Lynch out at the 45, midfield. Out of the 40, to the 30. On the run, he's wiped out at the 25-yard line. Recovering was Joey Milholm to prevent Lynch from going into the end zone, but the Spartans hit on another big play. Quickly down in the no huddle. Case will hand it off to Jeffrey Brown Jr. and he powers his way close to the 20 and gets inside the 20 before he is wrestled down. Some pushing and shoving as they try to untangle the pile. Clock moving, that'll be the final play of the first quarter and what a quarter it was. If this is a precursor of things to come at DeSanto Field this year, the Spartans will have an excellent home season. 21 to nothing after one quarter here under the lights at Case Western Reserve University. Spartans have the ball in the red zone and we'll be back with second quarter action in the 2015 home opener after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular spectacular accommodations. David Wilson, Eddie Jansen, Mike Becker, our producer and director up top. Greg Wilson on hand providing excellent moral support. It'll be second down and about six for the Spartans. And Eddie, the Spartans will no doubt be looking to sort of put the dagger in early here. You get a couple more scores on the board. It's going to be very difficult for the Bearcats to mount a comeback. Hockman is in. Four yards to the right of Kuda. Kuda will dump it over the top. It's caught. And Zach Medved holds that one in just outside the 10. It's going to be a pickup of about seven. You know, Dave, I can really only remember one incomplete pass thrown by Rob Kuda here today. He has really looked on target with each of his receivers, spreading the football around. And as we talked about before, Dave, he's a guy who values hitting all of his targets all across the field, making it so you can't really key in on one specific Eric, guy. That's an excellent point. There is no doubt about it. He looks to get everyone involved like a good point guard. Kuda will... Take the shotgun snap, back to throw. Goes to the corner of the end zone. Pass intended for Brian Erb, and it's broken up there by the Bearcats. Looked like Chase Costanzo was there defensively for St. Vincent. Actually, check that. Alex Charles, the senior, able to break that pass up. Third down and five, football on the Bearcats 18-yard line. Case up 21-0, just underway second quarter. Rob Kuda with a five-receiver set, empty backfield. They'll dump it off to Lynch to the 15. Tries to get close to the 12-yard line before he is caught and wrestled to the ground with the help of Nick Holzer, the sophomore. Looking at a third down and 10 now. And Dave, that was one of the few times that there was significant pressure brought up front by St. Vincent. Not a lot of time for Kuda to make a decision, but he did he did the right thing. He made a quick decision, got the ball out of harm's way, and now you give yourself another chance to try to convert on third down. It's a little longer, but no turnover. That's good for Case. Aaron Aguilar has checked in. He is a sophomore running back, and the Spartans are going to take a timeout here. So they didn't quite have the fit the way they wanted to, Looking at the Bearcat defense, Greg Debelak uses his first timeout. We'll keep it here, 13.40 to go here in the second quarter. Gives us a chance to kind of catch our breath and reset here. Both teams, Eddie running the no huddle. And, uh, boy, just play after play, a very fast pace. 
first half favoring the Spartans third down and 11 and I think you hit on it earlier Spartans up 21 nothing it's going to get lost on what a job the defensive unit is doing yeah I, I mean it is really a really balanced performance thus far by case and they are so fortunate to have Greg Debelek in his 12th year at the helm of this team one of the interesting things I thought about Debelak was that he lettered four times at John Carroll, once as a DB, once as a receiver, and twice as a quarterback. So he's an offensive-minded guy and a defensive-minded guy. They're getting the whole package with their head coach here. And don't forget, also an accomplished college basketball player mm -hmm. at John Carroll as well. 13-40 mm -hmm. to go. First half, third down, and 11. Kuda to throw. He'll get rid of it for Herb. Touchdown Spartans. Herb going over the top of the defender and hauling that one in. Again, he was in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Alex Charles and Brian Herb grabs the touchdown pass. 18-yard strike from Kuda and the Spartans go up 27-0. Well, if you remember the previous pass to Herb, he made an excellent adjustment to come back to the ball but couldn't quite hold on. He does the same thing here in the same spot of the end zone. Great adjustment. This time he comes up with the football and the touchdown. Herb getting in on the scoring act. Here is the kick by Ben Carniol. Tap Tasker with the hold. It is up and it is good. 28 to nothing. Case Western Reserve leading the St. Vincent Bearcats. Second quarter action will continue first, this time out on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread High quality ingredients and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Juan Coon Park will kick off for the Spartans. Park a senior. He will boot that one deep. And it is all the way back and taken by Dorsett from the 10. Out across the 20, outside the numbers. Runs into a pile, hit and wrestled to the ground at about the 22-yard line. Return of 12 yards. And now the St. Vincent offense will come out and try to get something going. St. Vincent coached by Ron Dolciato who also has a background as an assistant at John Carroll, where he was on the same staff with Greg Debelak for a number of years. Little Seattle in his second season with St. Vincent. Bearcats making their first appearance here at DeSanto Field since 2007 when the Spartans defeated the Bearcats 42 to nothing. And Dave, these are two teams that really don't know a whole lot about each other. This is only the third all-time meeting between these two clubs, so they had to do a lot of research here uh, in the week preparing for this game. But again, luckily for the Spartans, they get the bye the week before. They will set up Kraft in the backfield. Cheminsky wants to throw it. He's got Black open in the flat. Outside the numbers to the 35-yard line. Gets hit from behind. That gives him another five yards. And the Spartans getting a good lick on Black there. I'm going to make that tackle well, it's big number 97 that is uh, Benny Byer second down and four a pickup of six for Black who continues to be their go-to receiver tonight now Shaminsky wanted to go right now he's looking left he'll fire that ball out of bounds into the case bench big time pressure coming that time from Zach Lyon the outside linebacker Lyon out of Pittsburgh North Allegheny High School product. Third down and four. Yeah, you know, Dave, the one thing about Evan Shaminsky, quarterback only five foot ten. He really doesn't have a great ability to see over defenders. So if you get pressure in his face, that really shortens uh, his ability to make throws deep down the field because he can't see those receivers. Back to throw, Shaminsky on third and four. He'll dump it off to Kraft. Gets across the 40, near the sideline. 
looks to have the first down as he needed to get to the 44. That's exactly where they spot it. So a screen pass to the tailback, Shavante Kraft, and he picks up the first down. First and 10 for the Bearcats, 12.36 to go. First half, 28-0 Spartans. Bearcats moving right to left. They'll wing it out, caught. First time tonight, they go to Ryan Crawford. He is wrapped up. Not sure if the ball came loose or not. He was hit and hit hard. It looks like he held onto the football. A pickup of maybe one. They're going to a lot of those little wide receiver and tailback screen passes now. Eddie trying to break someone free, but the Spartans are able to track those guys down so far. Second down and 10, football at the 44-yard line. They'll snap it back to Sheminsky. They'll hand it this time to Crawford, and he has pushed back and had nowhere to run that time, trying to make it around the right side. Spartans got in there defensively and knocked him down. Matt Gallagher was there, freshman inside linebacker, helped to wrestle Crawford to the ground. Third down, 11. Spartans get an extra defensive back in. They snap it to a new quarterback who is in now. The backup signal caller is in. That is Tyler Donahue, and he had no receivers open. He tried to run for it, picked up about three. That'll leave them at fourth and eight. Well, the Bearcats really just trying to get creative on offense to try to come up with some answers for the Spartan suffocating defense. But it, you know, even a change of quarterback sometimes can do you some good. But the Spartans were ready for it. They have just come so prepared here in week two. Shaminsky actually lined up as a receiver on that play, Eddie. So that did not work out. The kick goes back to Fan. He is inside the 10, takes it at the 7, starts back up the middle of the field and is tackled near the 15-yard line. Nice punt for the Bearcats by David Butler, the senior. And he pins Case back deep with 10 and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. And the Spartans come back out offensively. Well, Dave, normally field position has worked out really well for the Spartans here today. You had the fumble, you had the interception. I think twice they started at around the 40 or so yard line. So Rock Huda and company, they got their work cut out for them here on this drive, but they've still got four touchdowns to show for it. They start with the empty backfield in a five receiver set for Rob Kuda. He will wing it out a little too uh, high on the pass as he was looking for Dan Cronin. Just outside the numbers, Cronin could not haul that one in. Dan, a senior out of Palos Heights, Illinois, near Chicago. Second down and 10 from the 15-yard line. Spartans operating in their own territory, 10.27 to go before halftime. Coming up at halftime, we'll get a look at the Case Western Reserve Marching Band performance and special ceremony on the field. The Case softball team, Zach Medved, intended target, pass incomplete. Medved thought he was interfered with. Yeah, that's T.J. Feeney, the uh, left outside linebacker in his third year, getting uh, some close contact there. He gets away with one right there, but falls to the ground. Spartans have to go back to work on third and long. Third down and 10. Kuda. Line up Hockman in the backfield now. Hockman shifts over to the left of Rob Kuda, the sophomore quarterback for the Spartans. Four receivers in the game. Kuda takes the snap, drops back near his own five. He'll get it over the middle of the field. Again, looking for Medved. Flags come in this time. Medved running into double coverage there. Pass dropped incomplete, but looks like we'll have an interference call coming up. Yeah, Dave, that penalty came from, or the, the flag rather, came from the sideline judge. He's about 15 or so yards away, but he was right on top of that play, had a great uh, line of vision with it, tossing out that dirty laundry right there going against the defense. Looks like a holding call rather than the pass interference. 
And they will mark it up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It'll be a first down for Case. And the Spartans will have it first and 10. And the football is resting at the 25-yard line. Out to Lynch. Little sideline screen. They get it out to Lynch with some running room. He moves straight ahead, gets knocked out of bounds into the Bearcats bench at about the 31-yard line. That's exactly how they want to get Brendan Lynch involved. He's 5'8", 185, but he's got some moves out there. They want to get him the ball with a little uh, green grass to run, with, to run with. He's roaming around, and he's picking up some positive yardage all evening long. And looks like a flag on the play. He's going to move this one back. Football is marked back to the 20. I did not see the flag come out, nor a call. I didn't either. I didn't see it anywhere on the field. No flag, no call. Not sure what's going on. The football is back to the 20-yard line now. It looks like another timeout has been taken by the Spartans. So that one uh, will make it second and 15. 9.58, that one's going to be a mystery to me. But the Spartans continuing to really put up some impressive numbers. And uh, we started to touch on it a few moments ago, Eddie, as you get a look there at Greg Debelak, but getting so many different people involved in this offensive scheme tonight. Not only does that uh, keep everybody fresh and engaged in the game, but very, very tough to defend. Ready to get back to action now. Case has one timeout left. They lead it 28 to nothing. And now timeout's probably not the greatest concern for Greg Debelak and company. Kuda all kinds of time. Deep downfield for Herb, and it's overthrown, incomplete. Double coverage down there against Herb. But for a moment, he had a step, and they took a shot. Well, this uh, Spartans home crowd really got a, their first really good look at Rob Kuda's arm. And a lot of oohs and ahs out there from the rocket out there that was thrown by Rob Kuda. I mean, three touchdowns last week. He's already got three in the game in about a quarter and a half, a little less than a quarter and a half. He is out to a phenomenal start in his collegiate career. Well, he's rushed for a touchdown as well last week and has a big game tonight on a 70-yard or a 52-yard scamper, and he tried to run for it there, and gap closed very quickly for the Bearcats. Bearcats there defensively. Matt McCarty getting in there again on Cuda, third down and 15, no gain on the play. 9.28 to go. Have the Spartans punted tonight? I'm not sure if they have. Maybe looking at a pun here if they cannot convert. I believe maybe on their first, first possession. First possession, yeah, that was it. That was the only one. Kuda back to throw. Here come the Bearcats on the blitz, and he is going to go down in a heap. They finally sack him. That's the first time tonight. He's back behind the 10-yard line. Ever hear something called a broadcaster's jinx, Dave? You know, the, the one punt, you yep. know, I, I think that was our fault. I think that was our fault right there. All kinds of pressure coming from St. Vincent. They they blitz six right there, and they get in Rob Kuda's face. But fortunately, the Spartans offensive line has been able to do that pretty well tonight and protect him really well. Now it's going to send Fire into his own end zone to, uh, to punt this one away. So good field position coming up here for the Bearcats. High snap. Let's see if they get it off. They do. And hopefully it takes a case bounce. It does not. And it rolls out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. And so the Spartans getting lucky. They got that one off. Jacob Burke there on the punt, the sophomore out of Johnstown, was able to get that punt off after grabbing the high snap. And the Bearcats will have a good opportunity here to get on the board with 8.25 to go in the second quarter. It's 28 to nothing Spartans. Best field position of the night for the Bearcats. You know, I would say if you had to punt in your own end zone, you probably want to do it when you're up 28 to nothing. You really do want to get yourself in a situation where you're uncomfortable here and there, but no damage done. They'll keep the backup quarterback, Tyler Donahue, the sophomore out of West Newton, PA, in the game. He scrambles and 
Goes straight up the middle. And picks up five. Second down and five from the Case Western Reserve. 27-yard line. Eight minutes to go here in the opening half at DeSanto Field. Playing under the lights tonight. Fireworks to follow the game for these fine fans who have come out to support the Spartans. Crawford up the middle. He is hit and knocked down. Spartans defensively. Zach Lyon in there again. Josh Rogers also there to help wrap him up. The nose tackle. Spartans defense pitching a shutout so far. Seven and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Donahue. At quarterback, Crawford in the backfield. Shaminsky is in as a receiver on the left. They'll go over the middle of the field. Black makes the catch on the five and gets down close to the goal line. He did not get in, I don't believe. They're going to say he's down inside the one-yard line. Boy, what a grab by Damon Black coming over the middle. And an excellent pass by Donahue, too. He only, he's only 5'10 as well, but he put a lightning rod behind that throw. Hit him right in stride. Donahue will run for it, and he is hit and dropped oh, oh, oh. after a deadlift by the Spartans defensively. Wow. Not in our house. You, uh, you want to make K a statement on that play? K.J. Peterson. My goodness gracious. Boy, that... Uh, Weight room work paid off there. He lifted the quarterback up and threw him to the turf. Shaminsky's going to come back in. Kraft in the backfield, a loss of two, second and goal from the three-yard line for the Bearcats. Six and a half to go here in the second quarter. Shaminsky takes the snap. Wanted to go with the option. Now he'll keep it and dives for the goal line. I think he's a little bit short. Looked like he took a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit there right at the goal line. He's about an inch shy of a touchdown. It's going to be third and less than a yard. Bearcats trying to punch it in. They took over on the 32-yard line. Crawford in motion, low snap to Shaminsky. He's going to try to make for the outside. Now he breaks it back in. He didn't get there. Spartans cover it defensively. Eddie, did we have a flag come in at the end of that play? Yeah, it looked, it looked so. Now, I thought I saw one tossed in the middle of the pile right there in the middle of the field. Officials are talking right now. It's a penalty against the Bearcats. It's going to be declined. I did not pick up the call, did you, Eddie? No. That is going to make I didn't it, pick it up. No. fourth and two now on the scoreboard from the two-yard line. 5.45 to go. It looks like a timeout has been taken. St. Vincent uses a timeout here. They'll try to decide what they want to do here. I would think you would have to go for it here. This late in the half, down 28 to nothing. This is uh, the best opportunity they've had on the night. And I mean, if you go for it and you don't get it, then you know it, it, it's like it doesn't doesn't hurt you either. I mean, with this big a deficit, you know you you're really in go for broke mode here now, Dave. You got really nothing to lose being down by four scores. But I mean, really, I mean, as Spartan enthusiasts here, we could not have asked for a better opening night here for the 2015 campaign. Albers, Canganelli, DeFrancesco, and Herb have all scored touchdowns for the Spartans tonight. Three touchdown passes for Rob Kuda, Canganelli with the touchdown run. Here we go, fourth and goal from the two. Shaminsky in the shotgun, Kraft back there on his right hip. Now he'll shift over to the left of the quarterback. Shaminsky has it, he wants to throw it. Now he'll try to scramble, he's going to be tackled in the backfield, it's a sack for the Spartans. And the shutout is intact. Back to make the sack, number 22, Zach Lyon. And the Spartans hold defensively. Zach Lyon with the sack on fourth and goal from the two-yard line. And the Spartans will take over on downs. 
How about that, Dave? They triple stack the wide receivers on the right side, so you know that the action is going to be on that side of the field, but the Spartans' defense sniffs it out. They really did a great job of reading the scouting report on the Bearcats today because they know their offense inside and out. First and 10, football at the 17-yard line of the Spartans, 5.40 to go, second quarter. Spartans up 28 to nothing. They take over after holding on a first and goal inside the five-yard line. And now Greg Debelak unhappy. I think that's a delay of game against the Spartans. They did not get the playoff. They'll mark it back to the 12. Well, when you think about it, Dave, really such a demand for a sophomore quarterback, Rob Kuda, to command this offense, a no-huddle offense in just his second year. Well, all kinds of trouble. St. Vincent was late getting up to the line of scrimmage and trying to match up, and it's going to be a false start against the Spartans, who I think tried to hurry up the play with St. Vincent scrambling, trying to match up, and it's a procedure penalty, and the Spartans get marched back five more yards. And it's now first and 20 from the seven-yard line. Spartans deep in their own territory now. They're going to hand it up the middle and try to get some of that yardage back. And they do get it out close to the 15-yard line. Pick up who carried that football. Thought for a moment it was Hockman, but uh, not totally sure on that right now. I believe that is Hockman in the backfield who carried the football. Fullback. Kuda from the shotgun. Three receivers on the right, no one on the left. And Kuda wants to run for it. He will. Out to the 20 yard line. 25 slides down close to the 30 yard line, maybe across the 30 to 31. And the Spartans are going to get a first down out of this. Boy, and how about Rob Kuda with this big lead that they have? He is still willing to take a bruising in the running game. He's got the wide open field to work with, so why not take advantage? All the way out to the 31 yard line. Pick up a 24 on that run for Rob Kuda, the sophomore. He's still in the shotgun, gets rid of it to Erb. Breaks it back inside the numbers, gets it out to the 40, still on his feet. Wrestled down to the ground at the 45 yard line. That's a pickup of 14 and another Spartans first down. Well, I'll tell you what, the initial hit on Brian Herb was way too high. You got to get below the pads. You got to aim for the legs right there if you want to take out the multifaceted Brian Herb right there. Because if you hit him any higher than that, he's going to stay on his feet and continue the play and keep marching down the field. Herb has division one size, 6'2", 205 pounds. A senior who has really overcome some physical adversity in his career. They will get the ball to Cronin on a little uh, short route back to the line of scrimmage, maybe picking up one, one and a half yards. A second down coming up for the Spartans. 28 to nothing, Case Western Reserve. We have four minutes to go here in the second quarter. And an official's timeout here before the Spartans could set up. They'll reset the play clock. Game clock is stopped with 3.58 to go. Second down and eight. Looks like Miles Anthony has checked in the backfield now. First time we've seen Anthony in the ball game. He caught a 26-yard touchdown pass from Cuda two weeks ago against the University of Chicago up at Stagg Field. Cuda keeps it. Midfield, now to the 45, to the 40, and dragged down to the ground. Finally tackled by Damian Charles of the Bearcats, and Cuda scrambles for another first down. Well, the Bearcats know all too well about the mobility of Rob Cuda right there, but he continues to run the ball with authority at quick pace. Anthony will get the carry and dives back to the line of scrimmage. No gain there, second down and 10. Well, he definitely, speaking of Cuda here, and there's a shaken up Bearcat as big Dwayne Hewitt is slow getting up, and they'll have to come out and take a look at Hewitt, who appears to have a lower body injury. Second down and 10. 
Spartans at the Bearcat 36 talking about Kuda. He runs with conviction. There is no doubt about that. When he decides to take off, he does so with abandon. Yeah, there are just so many plays in the Spartans playbook because he has the ability to run the football. I mean, there are plenty of plays in head coach Greg Debelek's uh, playbook, as you see him right there, designed to get Kuda the ball in space, but using his arm as well. I mean, that is also a weapon for Kuda and the Spartans offense. So it, it really just opens up the field and St. Vincent uh, really had their work cut out for them defensively. Uh, really taking in a mouthful with all of these talented players with Rob Kuda at the helm of the Spartans offense. Spartans will be on the road the next two weeks at Teal next week at Bethany on October 3rd. Back here for homecoming on Saturday, October 10th, a 1:30 game against Waynesburg. So two big road games coming up after this uh, Saturday night, Saturday night affair against the Bearcats. Kuda pump fakes, now tries to run it, gets away from the first wave of defenders and gets across the 30 down to the 28-yard line, takes a hit from Josh Shivitz at the end of that run. And he just, scrambles yeah. for seven. And we just talked about that conviction. Well, there was a conviction right there. He takes a big blow to his upper half, but he gets right back up. And he's, I mean, he's ready to run the play. I mean, he is receiving a play call uh, from his offensive coordinator right now. But, I mean, the conviction of Kuda has really just been tremendous here tonight. He was really ready to run that next play, but you got to listen to your coach if he wants to get a play call in. Well, they're going to let the play clock run all the way down here and then take a timeout. So that is going to be their final timeout of the half. 2.17 to go here in the opening half of play. 28 to nothing, Case Western Reserve. And really, if you're the Bearcats right now, Eddie, what, what do you think is going on in their huddle? And really, in the minds of the coaching staff, what they want to try to talk about at halftime? Well, there's all kinds of things that they're going to be discussing because you have to get creative offensively to get points on the board because the Spartans' defense has been stout. The other thing, too, is you really have to give this defense a pep talk, Dave, because I mean they've been on the field for the better part of this half. Uh, really, the Spartans dominating in terms of time of possession. So this defense really has done a lot of heavy lifting for the Bearcats here today. I know that they've allowed four touchdowns to score, but they have been on the field for well over 20 minutes in this half. Yeah, no doubt that uh, the fatigue factor is setting in on some of these uh, defensive players who have been out there for a lot of snaps. Third down and three. Kuda fakes the handoff to Hockman. Now he'll try and run it himself and bounces to the outside and has running room to the 35, down to the 25, now to the 20, inside the 15, close to the 10 and finally tripped up and it gets out of bounds over on the far sideline. Kuda saw both sides of the field that time as he scampers close to 25 yards. They get down to the four yard line. Well, normally, Dave, when you go east to west and change directions like that, there's usually not a whole lot of blocking on the other side of the field, but there were three offensive linemen opposite of Kuda right there to make that hole even bigger going down into the red zone. Kuda well over 100 yards rushing now on the night. First and goal from the four yard line for the Spartans. Kuda drops back, throws it over the middle. It's incomplete, looking for Herb. A little post route there, but Herb has that one knocked away. Defensive coverage by Dwayne Brown of the Bearcats. And the defensive responsibilities of the defensive coordinator and the staff for the Bearcats, really they are dealing with a lot right now because you've got three different receivers who have caught a touchdown pass here today. So no one you can really key in on in the red zone. That really opens up the playbook. Herb lines up wide right. He is the only wide receiver. Full house backfield now. Brown, Hockman, and Burke all line up with Kuda. They will flip it. And it goes to Jeffrey Brown Jr. And he is tackled outside the five yard line. So that uh, play did not materialize the way the Spartans wanted it. Bearcats keyed on Brown there and they will able to knock him down. He and Burke will leave. Hockman stays in. 
Now the Spartans get a four receiver set in. Cronin, Albers, and Medved line up on the left, Herb on the right. Third and six, third and goal from the six. They will throw it into the end zone, and Herb is interfered with. Flag comes out. Alex Charles protesting that he didn't feel he interfered with Herb, but you're going to have a pass interference call coming up here. And that fl a flag came out really quickly by the sideline judge right there, so a very definitive call, and, and that really wipes out a lot of good work that St. Vincent did on first and second down to get it to third down, and now uh, they're really the, you're giving a luxury to the Spartans once again. First down and goal from the three-yard line. Now under a minute to go here in the second quarter, and the Spartans leading at 28 to nothing. Kuda again with that full house backfield. Hockman, Burke, all check in. Now Kanganelli is in there as well. Kuda will hand it to Kanganelli, looking for his second touchdown of the night. He's down close to the goal line, but he's tackled and kept out of the end zone. It'll be second down and goal for the Spartans. See exactly where they mark Kanganelli down. Looks like the one yard line. See if the Spartans can get a push here up front. Second and goal from the one. They throw it and it's caught. Back of the end zone. Touchdown Spartans. Adam Hockman with the touchdown reception. The senior hauls it in. Adam Hockman is 12th career touchdown. And he joins the parade of touchdown scores tonight for the Spartans. It's now 34 to nothing. Ben Carney will coming out. Tap Tasker will hold it. Shannon Demery will snap it. Here is the kick. And the point after touchdown is good. And the Spartans extend the lead to 35 to nothing on a one yard touchdown pass to senior fullback Adam Hockman. 25 seconds remaining here in the half. We'll keep it here at in. Well, the Spartans taking advantage of the penalty, although they were already at the six. It was going to be very tough for the Bearcats to keep the Spartans out. But given that opportunity at the one yard line, Spartans throw a little wrinkle and go to the air. Yeah, and Dave, and, and five of the, excuse me, four of the five touchdowns that the Spartans have had in this first half have come in the red zone. I mean, that is one of the biggest keys to a very proficient offense is when you score inside of an opponent 20 yard line. And in fact, they've had two touchdowns at the one yard line or less than the one yard line. So you gotta love the uh, red zone execution here by the Spartans offense here today. They are firing on all cylinders and they're really looking to be one of the highest scoring offenses in their conference and in division three football. Off to a great start, 35 to nothing, 25 seconds left. Juan Kuhn Park with the kick. It is a short kick that bounces near the 15 yard line. Bearcats have it. Spartans with good pursuit down there. DJ Ocean Kelly unable to turn it upfield. He was wiped out down there by the Spartans. That was Shannon Demery who got down there and made the stop. And so with 19 seconds left, the Bearcats will take over down 35 to nothing. And Case Western Reserve and Rob Kuda churning out the points tonight. Adam Hockman, by the way, with his ninth career touchdown reception. He has caught more touchdowns as a fullback than he has run for touchdowns. They will hand it up the middle. This is Kraft, and he breaks into the defensive backfield, cuts to the outside near the 31-yard line, and he's hit and knocked down by Jordan Esteban. Nice run by Kraft, and the first play from scrimmage gets him a first down. He'll be at the 31-yard line. Kraft with well over 800 yards on the ground last year and 300 yards through the air. Really the complete package for them as uh, the feature back and really the only play where he had any room to run. 